Kia ora and welcome to the show. We got a bit of a country feel this week. And you know what, deciding what career path to follow can be one of the most important decisions you'll ever have to make. So that's why we've put together a show that every week looks at three different career paths and provides you with some great helpful advice and tips to help make that all important career decision a little bit easier. In today's show, we're in the heart of the King Country where 17 year old Michael Bolton mucks in on a farm and finds out what a career as a farmer could offer. 16 year old Dominic loves aeroplanes and everything to do with them and thinks becoming an aeronautical engineer could be the job for him. We see if he's right. And 17 year old John hopes his future occupation will be hands on and we think we've got a career for him to sample that could fit the bill. But first up, goodbye city life, hello wide open spaces. My name is Mike Bolton and I am a year 13 student at Oria College. I'm pretty sure that agriculture or sheep and beef farming is the the career I'm looking at taking. To get a feel for high country sheep and beef farming, Mike's come to the Māori Trust Farms at Te Hapea and Waipa in the King Country. Wayne Fraser, who's a farm manager, will be showing Mike the ropes. So what skills does a new entrant to the industry need? Oh, listening skills, communication skills, two biggest things. They can listen and communicate, we can get on well. They'll learn a lot faster. G'day. Mike, is it? Yep. Hey, Wayne, had any experience with farming? A little bit, yep. A little bit? Yep. Oh, well, well, we'll see if we can get out there and get your boots dirty. Sweet. Cool. First job, drafting, where the sheep are run through a race and separated out. The really dirty sheep, which need to be cleaned yep. up, are separated from the rest. Up to the challenge? It's a bit of shot. OK, cool. Jim ramp. Whoop, I'll get out of the road before I get wasted. There's a land. Yep. Don't mean you head across, because another sheep will come directly in behind and it'll take you out. Yep. And they do hurt. Yep. <laughs> it's a pretty good start to the day and Mike's quick to reveal he already knows how to handle sheep. So what we'll do, to tell its age, we check its teeth. Okay, by checking those teeth, that tells me that that's a lamb. Yep. There's a whole variety of different opportunities out there for young people. There is sheep and beef, there's dairy, there's horticulture. On a farm like this, where might a new entrant start? Dagging, they would have to clean the gear, be able to set their hand pieces, ready for a day's work of dagging. They would learn a skill as we go. Oh, you have to pick the dirtiest one. I should be able to fit right in there. Yeah. OK, now lift there. We need to keep, you, keep that bottom piece down. Mike soon learns there's nothing glamorous about farming sheep. No, he's going really well. Um, he's picked up things really fast. Uh, a lot faster than I uh, anticipated. Push. Jeez, Mike, you're a natural there. Yeah. But after a few thousand, you'll even get better. Yep. So how'd you enjoy that? It was good. Yep. Yeah, I heard you in there. It was a bit hard on your back. Yep. You got to toughen up, eh, when you're out on the farm. For those starting out, a qualification in agriculture is recommended, but not essential. The skills can be gained on the job. Come down this end. Come over here, Mike. Well, they progress from a junior general hand up to a general hand. In that time frame, they would have to do numerous courses from ITO, uh, tractor, chainsaw, ATV courses. As part of requirement for that person, they would have to have, to have those under their belt. Yep, I've started from the ground up. I started as a, as a tractor boy, now I'm a manager. And in my 20 plus years of farming, I've learned a range of skills. You've become an accountant, a bank manager, a consultant, and numerous things. Farm work is extremely varied. You can be managing cattle, dipping, carving, weaning, or fixing a broken fence. Agriculture ITOs offer Good courses night. in all these areas, right up to management levels. In today's farming industry, there are newcomers, trainees and modern apprentices. Brett Young is a King Country Farming Modern Apprentice. How did you get into the farming? Oh, I just heard about it through other friends that are doing it. Yep. And um, they really got a lot out of it, so I thought yep. I'd give it a go, yeah. What's your background into farming? And... Uh, I started shepherding when I left school, and yep. this is my second job since I left school. And... Yep. So what's next for you? Probably a management course, or yep. next year, yeah, production management. Yep. Come back, Joe! Come back, mate! Show, show me how you whistle. What, that way? Ah. Oh, we've got a lot to work on then. Yeah. OK. That stops the dog. Just a short, sharp one. Yeah. Sides. And the opposite side. 
but of being a shepherd and a farmer is being able to yeah. work your work your dog. Yeah. And um, so we're going to have to try and teach you how to whistle. At the end of two days, Mike's had a go at a whole lot of jobs, and he's certainly made an impression. He's gone really well. He's actually um, probably a lot more advanced than I thought, but he's done really well. Um, and the beauty about it, he, he's, he's willing to be here. That's the hardest part. And that's with any, I suppose, with any job, you've got to have the passion to do it, otherwise you wouldn't do it. Um, I found it really enjoyable. It was good to talk to people that have been in the business for a while and experience different things. So, yeah, no, it was good. Have you ever ridden a horse before? No. Well, I think you might have to start because it's a long way back to Auckland. Put your steering wheel on. Put your reins in. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> whoa, 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 pull your reins in, pull your reins in. Pull your reins in. Pull your reins in. <laughs> National certificate and agriculture courses are offered at several levels. Your interest and career goals will dictate which level of the certificate you need to achieve. Level two is an introduction to the industry. It takes one year to complete and requires 18 hours of off-farm theory-based training. The outlook for farming is good and the numbers employed are expected to rise. Farming is becoming more specialised to cater for niche market demands and all farmers now have to adjust farming styles to maximise returns. Michael, no one would even know you're a city slicker after that performance mate, well done. Now coming up, Dominic's aeronautical passion could see him become a high flyer behind the scenes of the aviation industry. We'll see you after the break. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where we look at a whole range of options to help you learn more about what you could be doing as a career. These days, flying anywhere in the world is taken for granted, but the planes have to be checked, double-checked, and checked again. And this is where the skilled aeronautical engineers come in. And Dominic thinks this could be just the job for him. G'day, my name's Dominic Gundry, I'm 16, and I go to Ross Mini College on the North Shore. I hope I get to sit in the cockpit of a 737 or a Metro, just any plane. <laughs> Excited for that. Aeronautical engineering is a highly specialised area, and to learn a little of what's involved, Dominic's come to Airwork New Zealand's hangar at Auckland Airport. Airwork provide a variety of maintenance services, including turbine repair and overhaul, as well as specialised equipment modifications. Brian Porter is Airwork's aircraft engineering manager. We're looking for commitment. Um, it's three years minimum training. Um, with that, there's a huge cost involved. Each rating course is approximately about twelve and a half to fifteen thousand dollars per engineer. So, with strong boots and overalls, Dominic's suitably equipped to be shown around the airwork hangar. <laughs> you don't go too good at 10, 20 thousand feet with no air. Because there's so much specialisation, apprentices are really taken direct from school. So like the preferred option is to pick people from an approved course. Remember, at the end of the day, you are responsible as the individual for the safety of the aircraft. Yeah. If you cock up, it goes splat. It's a career that involves um, thinking out of the box. You have to say, I did this to the best of my abilities. This area here is the tool room. Every single engineer has a tool tag, okay, and you put it on the aircraft that you're working on, and then you put one also on the um, tool board. That's really important for us, because at the end of the day, when the aircraft goes to fly, we have to confirm that all the tools are accounted for. This air ambulance has been out of service for new equipment to be installed. I can. Because this aircraft is an air ambulance aircraft, and it needs to get in all the time into airfields that are closed because of fog. We've installed a brand new GPS, which integrates into the flight instrumentation over here. And it will say, right, I know exactly where I am, I know where the runway is, we know we're going to go there and land. After a test flight, the GPS has the thumbs up and a standby aircraft can be released. The big job today is to move the specialised ambulance equipment into the re-equipped plane. This industry is about hard slog, it's about getting up early in the morning, it's about working late, getting wet, getting full of kerosene and having to work bloody hard. This is not a nine to five job, this job is, has always been, if you're lucky, six days a week, if you're unfortunate, seven days a week. I thought engineering was just like engines, jet engines, all that, not like configuring planes and it's much different to what I thought. 21 year old Jamie Anderson is doing his second year of training at Airwork. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's great. Uh, 
plenty of opportunities out there and it's always a challenge when you come to work. It's not the same old stuff every day and uh, getting to work with modern technology uh, and all sorts of work, varying atmospheres, it's great. Dominic gets a lesson in wire safety yeah. lock techniques. We generally uh, safety lock components like this to ensure that due to the vibrations in flight, nothing can come undone. We put twists in a bit of lock wire and we use the lock wire to hold the connector in a clockwise positive position. So in flight, it can't actually turn anti-clockwise. What we're looking for from the engineer himself is um, the ability to learn, the ability to give back to us, and um, to stay within the organisation, and more importantly, to stay within the industry. We've got three important parts of it, OK? The suck bit, then it compresses it in the middle, and then we set fire to it, and we throw it out the back. Tomorrow, this 737 has an important job flying Greek government officials. Inside, it's still an empty shell. First thing on the schedule sheet tomorrow will be to fit it out. The seats are going in, and Dominic's down to help. The biggest problem with aviation is that kerosene gets into your blood and you, you get addicted to it. You're out here um, at 4 o'clock in the morning, you're out here at 2 o'clock in the evening. People rely on you to do something. At the end of the day, the phone rings, you have to do something. And that's it. It's an addiction. Better than a drug. The seats are in, but now there's a problem with the fuel. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the cannon plug off and give it a clean. So it's just a cannon plug here, it's just like a wall socket. Let's pop it off there. Check all the pins are straight. If that's the problem, then it's a simple repair. But there's no easy way to find out if it's fixed. We've got a problem with the aircraft. The uh, right-hand engine has got a fuel indication problem. I've transposed the gauges, and we'll now do an engine run to see whether it's satisfactory or not. If not, we'll look into it further. Jump. Okay. If we have a, if we have an incident, when I say go, don't f around. Out. Gone. Okay. You understand? It's extremely important. Yeah. This is not fun. OK, then we're going to be starting now number one engine. We'll hold for that, and then we'll be starting number two engine from there, OK? Temperature's coming up. Temperature's rushing. Oil pressure's good. Tell them we're going to take them up to 40% power. Once again, it seems to be flowing, all right? Yeah. The test is successful, and the plane will shortly be on its way. If you um, uh, get it. This career can take you anywhere and everywhere. I've been to Iceland, Switzerland, Sweden, right through Europe, England, time in the States. Um, it, it, the, it's your oyster. You open it, you decide. Never knew there were so many like opportunities in this kind of career. The best part of this experience was starting up the 737 and giving it a ground check and all that. Sitting in the cockpits of the Metro and just doing stuff around planes. I enjoyed it so much. A National Certificate in Aeronautical Engineering is available in seven specialisations with further qualifications available in aviation support and aircraft servicing. All training is done on the job. Assessments are conducted as part of a training programme agreed between the business, the trainee and the Aviation Tourism and Travel Training Organisation. Aeronautical engineers usually earn between $45,000 and $70,000 per year and the qualifications you receive in New Zealand are recognised throughout the world. Well, could a career in aeronautical engineering be for you as well? If you think it might be, then you can find out more about that career and all the careers featured on our shows on our website. So during the break, grab a pen and paper because I'll be giving you those details at the end of the programme. When we come back, John finds out if his wish for a hands-on job could lead to something he could see himself doing in years to come. This is just my job. You're watching Just A Job, and if you're thinking about a career or maybe wanting a change from the career you're in, then stay tuned because this is the show that could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. Now, do you think you'd enjoy working indoors, change of scenery every day, and a job that's hands-on? Well, John does, so we sent him along to check out a career in laying timber flooring. Well, hi, my name is John Otomon. I'm 17 years old. When you look at the floor, you just see it and say, oh, this should be easy to do. I hope it's easy. Well, you might be in for a shock, John. There's a lot of work and skill involved in laying and finishing a timber floor. And Stephen Heald will use his 16 years experience at Just Harwood Floors to get you skilled up. If they've got a good attitude, that's 99% of the battle. The skills can be taught to just about anyone that wants to learn, but yeah, as long as they've got the good attitude, they'll work out fine, definitely. John. Hello. How are you, mate? I'm Steve. Welcome to Just Harwood Floors. 
Uh, what makes you want to get into timber flooring, bud? Uh, basically the practical part of it. But most of it's uh, actually putting the timber on the floor, but if you come inside, I'll show you a little bit more what we do, eh? Come on in. Okay. Come. There are three types okay, of flooring is, uh, Stephen installs. Uh, Laminate is an artificial floor that is very hard wearing, while a timber veneer is a real wood bonded to fiberboard. And then there's what we're going to be doing today, which is uh, solid wood, traditional tongue and groove, uh, real wood all the way through. Um, not sanded and coated, so we have to lay it, then we have to sand it, and then we have to coat it. So how about we head out to the side and we'll go and get some boards on the floor, eh? Righto, first pun part. Get this uh, timber upstairs. Here's the beam anyway. Because we're using a floor sander, we need to make sure all the nails are punched down by the surface so we don't hit them with a the floor sander. So normally you need a nail punch, but I'm going to give you the play school version so you can't hurt yourself. It's got a nice soft rubber edge so you save your sands. Timber flooring covers everything from possibly lifting up existing floor coverings, prepping the subfloor, laying the boards of course, um, and then sanding and coating. Okay, now we're going to get into some floor sanding. Okay, you're strapped into it now, no getting away. The sander weighs 100 kgs and is so powerful it could get away if it's not tamed. There are two different apprenticeships in timber floor installation. Floor sanders study the certificate in fine sanding and finishes and are responsible for substrate preparation and the final sand and varnish. Um, generally it's either or in this industry, they're either a floor sander or a floor layer. There's not many that do both, so you mainly dedicate yourself to be a floor layer or a floor sander. Okay, it was a good start, but I think you're going to be here all day if we keep doing it like this, so I think we'll bring in the uh, professional and get him to get this floor sander, eh? The drum sander may have taken a bit to get used to, but John has a chance to redeem himself with the edging sanding machine. Important thing with sanding is always keep moving, never stop with the machine when it's going, but no, that is heaps better, heaps better. You must be starting to work up a sweat now, eh? <laughs> yeah. Once the site is clean, Stephen prepares to lay the first line of planks. The skills you're going to gain from doing an apprenticeship are going to be uh, things from being able to measure a job, draw a floor plan, know how to use a scale rule, the woodworking skills to lay a timber floor, how to use all the equipment, the power tools, hand tools. John, have you used a jigsaw before? Oh, yeah. You have? Cool. So you know the basics. Let's see how much damage you can do with it then, eh? Excellent. Not too bad. Nice. Yeah, perfect fit. The planks can be floated, nailed or glued to the floor depending on the type <laughs> used and the surface they are laid to. But John is going to get into the glue. Okay, time to get messy, mate. Here we go. It's getting better. Not the prettiest uh, glue line, but um, at least it's all on the floor and not on the walls. And not too much on yourself even, eh? Not too bad. Best result for laying a timber floor is a satisfied client with a uh, enduring floor that's going to last forever. This is the gun that makes it all happen. I know it doesn't look very flash, but believe me, it's our favourite tool. It, uh, it's called a secret nailer. Even though it's called a secret nailer, it fires a staple. The harder you hit it, the more tight it will cramp the board. Hit it as hard as you can. All you might, mate, as hard as you want, OK? All right, and give it a go. And clear. Now the floor is installed, it's time to get that fantastic final finish with some final fine sanding. Beautiful. It's a lot easier to use than the other one, eh? Yeah. The sanding is finished with a fine grit sander, but there are still those pesky corners to do. All the sanding machines we've got, none of them get into the corner. So unfortunately, the last bit in here, it's got to be hand scraped. My mother always told me, get a trade. Before you do anything else, before you travel, before you do anything else, get a trade underneath you. Once you've got a trade, you can always fall back on it. If you're even thinking about being a builder, or a brickie, or a sparky, or a plumber, why not timber flooring? It's, there's no downside to timber flooring. It's, this is the glory part. Now it's time to put the polyurethane on the floor and let it come alive again. What colour is this? This is clear. Clear. This is just clear poly. 
I enjoy the variation. I enjoy the working with wood. I enjoy working with the guys I'm with. Don't coat yourself in that corner. Or maybe I should have left it. <laughs> so how'd you find that? Easy. Easy? Yeah. Oh, I need a bigger room next time. The floor has been finished. So how did John do? Definitely not scared to work, not scared to get it mucked in. You know, he's excellent, I'd give him a job. Students interested in timber flooring can either study a national certificate in fine sand and finishes or wood overlay installation. Most training is done on the job, but there are also block courses. Block courses are subsidised. Salaries start at $32,000 and can go up to about $130,000 for a self-employed contractor. John seemed to do really well, so maybe he's found a job to pursue a little further. And maybe it's something you could be interested in too. So thanks, John, for being a part of today's program. And of course, Michael and Dominic. Today, there are literally thousands of career options available to you, and sometimes the choice can be a difficult one to make. So I certainly hope our programs will help you to decide. But to help you even more, we have the lovely Sarah from Career Services, who has this week's tip for getting you that dream job. Before you get into training, remember to think about the future of a job or industry. It's good to follow your interests, but if there aren't any jobs at the end, you could be wasting your time and money. So think about the demand for the skills you want to develop. Is there a shortage or an oversupply? Can you take the skills with you overseas if you decide to travel? And what about the chance of self-employment in the future? Check out the Career Services website for information on current and future job trends in a whole range of industries. Well, that's all we could fit in for this week, but don't worry, we are back again next week and we'll have another three careers and, of course, more helpful tips for you. All the information about the careers you've just seen or for more info about how to make that right career choice can be found by simply going to our program website at www.tvnz.co.nz and enter the keywords, just the job. Happy hunting and I'll see you next week. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.